welcome to Pulled Focus. Um, for our first season, we are talking to the filmmakers submitting for this year's Deep Fried Film Festival. And this time we are joined by Ian Gordon, who has a film called Serene. Hello, Ian. Hi there. How are you doing? Great, great. And um, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your film you've submitted this year? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Ian Gordon. Um, I'm based in Fife in Scotland. And the film that's submitted is Serene, uh, which is Scots. Um, it's a film about a, a disgraced pharmaceutical engineer who's um, frantically trying to cure his own degenerative disease in his own homemade lab. So you can imagine that doesn't go very well. Um, it's uh, it was made under lot, so we could probably talk about that a little bit more. Um, there is a trailer, a, a trailer and teaser up online, but we do have an exclusive clip for the Deep Fried Film Festival right here. Song makes me a wee bit squeamish each time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so I did all the music as well. Brilliant. So, well, what inspired you to make the film? Um, it's uh, so it, it was a quiet, um kind of lockdown film, and uh, I think I was just getting frustrated um, at not being able to get really. I'd, I've been involved in some of my own projects and projects friends that had shoots cancelled because of COVID. Um, so I'd kind of planned to make the film around about November and then uh, I, well, I planned to make it um, around about the Christmas holidays and um, from I think it was Boxing Day 2020 all of Scotland went into the level four lockdown so we were kind of under the, the strictest of the, um, the, the restrictions and uh, I was stuck in the house and it was just really an opportunity to do something creative um, and to, to try and kind of take it. So that's why it's maybe a bit gory and extreme as well, because that's just that's me sort of bouncing off the walls a bit in the house. Right. Martin? Yeah, you can stop. Um, I noticed at the end and the credits you had your, your kids' names up there. So how did they feel about being involved in it? Um, I think they were kind of curious about what I was doing. So obviously I was in the house um, filming largely on my own. So that was really difficult in its own way because I had uh, I had a motorized trip, um, and with a kind of panning and camera movements, and I was operating that with an app on the phone, um, and I also had an off-camera pull focus. So when I could, I was trying to kind of control the movements of the camera, control the focus kind of off camera. So in a lot of the shots you only ever see one of my hands because one of them's kind of like off camera controlling um, the movements. And in fact, in the clip that you just saw, I think I'm controlling the app with my toes. Um, and then in the in this clip where I put the drill down and pick up the whiskey, I was just off camera setting the focus and then coming in for the shot. But that wasn't always possible. So if there was a shot where I needed both hands in, 
and I needed to pull focus, I had to just grab kid. <laughs> and uh, my five-year-old Alvin uh, did the pull focus for me on a couple of shots. And um, my, uh, my seven-year-old Oren did, um, did, did, did some grip uh, for me as well. And he was, I think he was curious about it, but he kept getting creeped out because he'd come into my, my room when I was editing or something. And he'd be chatting away to me and then he'd say, what is that? And it would be like a finger sitting on my desk or something. It's a wee spoiler for you. <laughs> so other than lockdown restrictions, which thankfully we're now at a stage where things are going to normality, um, what other sort of challenges did you face in making this film? Um, I think it was just making it myself, I think was the hardest thing. Um, I think, like, you get used to having a crew around and you get used to, um, like, I, I generally am used to working with my friends or with my brother. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of used to the company as well. So it was a lonely shoot, which was, and I didn't really expect that. Uh, I did enjoy kind of working pragmatically and I, and I liked, um, I got used to, you know, the way I had to set things up, shoot things, then check things afterwards. But I did miss working with friends. I missed you know, just a bit of banter on set that kind of keeps you going and people feeding in ideas and stuff. And then, so I think that was tough. And there was, there was times where like my hands were covered in blood and, you know, I had to go away and wash my hands and then come back and stop the camera recording and so ended up with these really long takes. Um, and there's a significant portion of the film where I had one hand out of action as well. So I, I had to do all of that, but just with one working hand. Um, so I think, I think that's probably challenge enough. Um, and then you move on and you have to do, that's just the shooting, you know, I had to do um, special effects, the compositing and the soundtrack as well. So that whole process took a lot longer than I'd intended. I, I planned for it just to be something that was going to occupy my Christmas holidays, but I didn't actually finish the film until about May or June, I think. Um, and by that time I was back kind of working and trying to find spare time to do it. And it's not like you're going to have the same sort of banter with the kids as you would with your normal crew as well, eh? <laughs> Definitely, yeah, yeah. So, and it's one of those films where you, can only, yeah, you can only tell them so much about what's actually happening in the film as well, because it's, <laughs> it's kind of not, not really their uh, age range. Um, what, what other filmmakers inspire, um, inspire you or do, or do you follow? Um, I'm interested. Folk horror is kind of my like subgenre of, uh, of of real interest. So, in terms of folk horror, I'm, I'm looking at like people like Ben Wheatley and David Bruckner, Jeremy Sonier, um, Ari Aster did Hereditary in Midsummer. Um, he's doing some amazing films. Rod, Robert Eggers, uh, who's got a new film coming out, The Northman. I think that, that looks really interesting. And his stuff is is it's got a really kind of creepy approach as well, a bit like Ari Aster, David Lowry as well. well I'm really looking at night, I think that looks amazing. It's totally my wheelhouse of, of sort of um, a bit of fantasy, a bit of horror, a bit kind of, a bit of a folk element. Um, but in terms of Scottish directors, I'm also, uh, I like David McKenzie's stuff, I like Dale Law King. Um, and uh, John McLean, he's, he was a guy, um, he was in the beta band, he, he did a lot of beta band music videos and then he directed a film called Slow West, which was a great film, but for some reason hasn't done another film, so I'm desperate for John McLean to do something else. Um, Kevin McDonald's always strong as well. And, uh, and Lynn Ramsey, of course, Lynn Ramsey's just like amazing. Um, so I'm always, I'm always looking out for her new film. I think the last one was um, uh, with Joaquin Phoenix. It was a brilliant film. And what do you think of the, the Scottish <laughs> film industry? Um, I don't know much about the independent film industry in Scotland. The, the sort of level I'm operating at is, you know, below the level of like funded and supported films. Obviously, um, kind of Creative Scotland and, and Screen Scotland and people like that have um, they, they have projects that they want to promote and they have a they have an agenda to um, to improve underrepresented uh, areas stuff like that. Um, and we're kind of, the guys I know and the guys I work with are um, more of a sort of indie underground, really, in Fife. Um, and, I mean, in those terms, it's pretty healthy. There's, there's a bunch of feature films on the go in Fife just now that are kind of under the radar of funded films. 
Um, there's a movie called um, Skin Jacker, which has just gone through a, a crowdfunder, and they're filming on a sound stage in Dunfermline at the moment. Um, there's a big movie called Dick Dynamite, representing. Um, I'm part of the crew for Dick Dynamite, a movie by uh, Robbie Davidson, um, and it's it's looking absolutely superb. It's this kind of World War Two action movie that he's almost finished. Um, COVID has kind of uh, derailed things a little bit, but it, it's looking great. Um, Robbie's brother, Sean Davidson, working on a film called Time Warp 1315. It's a um, feature film as well. He describes that as what well, Top Time Machine meets Braveheart and Rambo. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've kind of we've just got started on it, um, and it's going to be pretty tasty. Um, but yeah, definitely Dick Dynamite, um, Time Warp, uh, Skinjacker, and these are all in just in Fife. And they're all kind of on the go just now. I'm hopefully starting another feature film uh, around October. And again, it's it's just going to be sort of pulled together from whatever money we can scrape together and whatever crew uh, we can kind of form at the time. So I think that is relatively healthy. Um, and I, I don't know about the rest of Scotland. I mean, if that's just Fife, I guess these types of things are going on all over. Um, but yeah, I, I think... Because filmmakers have now got access to cinema cameras and they've got we've got dollies, we've got jibs, we've got lighting setups, we've got drones and stuff like that. I think the gap between funded work or the, or the kind of traditional independent cinema and the kind of no budget stuff is is sort of been reduced just in terms of like it used to be the case you would watch um, shoestring films and you could tell they were shoestring films because they were in black and white or. You know, they didn't have lighting setups. It was all natural light, and it was all really sort of dark and and, and grimy. Uh, whereas now, that's not so much the case. I think in terms of equipment, that gap is closed. It's really just about sort of the skill and experience of the crew. You know, you can you can kind of sometimes tell when something's been shot on a shoestring just based on they probably didn't have a director of photography or they probably didn't have professional actors. So those are the challenges I think that we're facing. Now. Um, it's not so much equipment anymore because we've got we've got our hands on it really good quality. And Scotland's getting more and more attention from Hollywood with like Fast and Furious done in Edinburgh, um, Indiana Jones and Batman in, in Glasgow just now. Do you think that will have a knock-on effect on the industry as well? Yeah, I do. I think I think that helps um, for the projects like they've got in Leith to get studios going. And I was lucky enough to get onto the set of, of Infor when they were filming in Edinburgh. Um, and uh, we were chatting to, I was chatting to the Russo's PA, he was the director, and she was kind of telling me about, some of the crew had come from things like Outlander and stuff like that, but largely there wasn't a domestic crew that they could just, Hollywood could just come in and say, like, let's pick up reps, camera guys, you know, lighting guys, gaffers, and all that sort of stuff. They had to just, they had to import crew, um, and they also had to get crews from, um, from, you know, industry elsewhere in the UK. So I think, it, I think that's good because you, you're kind of getting jobs and then you'll get a base and then it becomes a lot easier for these films just to move in. And I do think they're desperate for a change of scenery as well. I think um, that's the reason the Hollywood films are coming to um, Scotland. It's not just like, I think in, in Ireland it was traditionally ten, tax breaks and stuff like that, but I think really they do see the opportunity of filming in places like Edinburgh and filming in the Highlands and stuff. And they know that that's going to have a, a really positive effect on their film and it's going to make it more marketable as well. Right. And lastly, your the film, your film series is going to be shown at this year's Deep Fried Film Festival. We are making it online this year because of COVID. Um, we had no idea what sort of restrictions would be in place by the time August got round. Um, so it will be available online. And why should people watch your film? Um, I think it's a film... It, might look like it takes its subject matter and its uh, characters quite seriously, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. I think if you come in with a sense of humour, you'll definitely enjoy it. And it's uh, there's a few very unexpected things that pop up. Um, so I actually, despite the fact that it looks horrific, um, it's actually a lot of fun, I think. Uh, so I think that's why people should watch it. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Eli. So this has been Pulled Focus as part of the Deep Fried Film Festival. You'll be able to watch all the submissions online um, through Facebook and YouTube. We will be posting links to these. And thanks for joining us.